Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Mine Colony's Byzantine. That's right, I'm saying it right now. And I'm joined here by Jay Hoobies. Or am I? Who is this guy with this crazy mustache? Well, we've had a bit of a skin change over here on the colony, and I'm pretty excited to show you how I obtained that and what it means. So let's jump in. Oh, yeah, so look at Jay. Doesn't he look amazing? And also, if we come over here to Nikki, she's had a bit of a facelift as well. And I'm not talking about Botox, no siree. I'm talking about a brand new skin because we've become Mine Connolly's patrons. So basically, if you sign up to the Mine Connolly's Patreon, and uh, I feel like I should because I love this mod, doing so unlocks a whole bunch of citizen styles. Now we've got default, which is what we had before. Then there's Medieval, Undead, what the hell, East Asian, and Nordic. So I tried East Asian, that basically makes everybody Japanese, and it might be a little bit racist, I'm not sure. But this is what it makes Jay look like, so yeah. And over here, this is what East Asian Nikki looks like. Fantastic. And now we'll look at the East Asian guards. Yeah, here we go, looking like a badass samurai. There's also Nordic, if you want to give your colony a bit of a Viking feel to it. Here's a look at Viking Nikki. Oh man, love that blonde. And Viking J. Ooh, a commanding beard, sir. But the Byzantines weren't exactly Vikings. And they definitely weren't Japanese. And then there's Undead. And I guess what you could do is make like an evil kind of necropolis playthrough where you have like an evil colony. But here we go. This is Undead Nikki. Uh, and she, she looks like a gray ghost. What about Jay? Oh, and Jay has become a zombie. All right. So an interesting twist to say the least. But since default kind of looks a little bit too modern for this, it looks a bit more like colonial style, we're going to go with medieval. Oh, wait, you didn't change back to medieval. There we go. We're going to go with medieval because while, I mean, the Byzantines weren't exactly walking around in chainmail, maybe they were actually, go back to the right period, but it feels like medieval fits the most with the style of colony that we have. So there we go. I'm excited to see what the other medieval skins look like. Now you might have seen over there, whoa, the wall has had a facelift. That's right, we took the wall, the gates, and the guard towers over on the edge there to level two. And while we were doing that, we added a road between the town hall and the wall. hooked up the guard towers and also used the Mine Connolly's terrace decoration to raise up this area over here. Looking pretty good. Oh, here's a medieval guard. What do you look like, John Cletus? Oh yeah, just like a classic knight with a bit of a side parting haircut. Love it. So what are we doing this episode? Well, like I said last episode, we're going to try and conquer the food problem we have over here on the colony. Now we could go super easy. I've set up some botany pots over there. And what we could do is just put some wheat, some carrots, some potatoes into those botany pots. And then there you go, job done. But that ain't cool. That's not the mine colony's way. So we're going to set up a special hut for this. We're going to go for the fisherman's hut. So how do you make a fisherman's hut? Yeah, boom. Well, we're going to need sticks in a diagonal, then some string to make the rod. But we're also going to need two of these because the fisherman that we hire is going to need a rod as well. There we go. Then it's as simple as putting wood around the edge, the fisherman's rod in the middle. Whoops, missed that one. And then the builder's tool right at the top. And boom, we got a fisherman's hut. We should only need one because these fishermen get a lot of fish, generally speaking. And now before we place this, we're going to go to the botany pots and just put some interesting things in here. We're going to need some sugarcane because books and paper are very important for a colony. We're also going to put some flax seeds because, hey, we need some more string. We'll put a sunflower in here so that we can hire more dudes when the time arises. But we've got plenty of wood over here. Oh, apples as well. Nice. Very nice. So we should be good to go. Now, where are we going to put the fisherman's hut? This is a really, really big question and a difficult one. Basically, when you only have a small amount of water on the edge of your colony, you know, you can basically say, well, I've got to put the fisherman's hut there. It's not even really a choice. The problem we have is choice. Okay, no, that's a bit of a tight squeeze next to this guard tower. And at level five, oh, yeah, at level five, it gets its own tower. And that's going to look a bit messy next to the guard tower. So let's look at somewhere else. 
Well, what about over here? There's no towers immediately near this. We've got a bank over here that's not really being used. A river bank, that is, not a money bank. What do we think? The pier doesn't lean out too far. And actually, it looks like this opening might be the perfect size. Yeah, the building kind of fits perfectly in that gap. Oh, okay, well, that's a choice. And you know what? I think it is a good one. Like I've said before, some of these buildings are incredibly huge. So we want to get these small buildings squeezed in wherever we can manage. So go back down to level one, double check the boundaries and make sure it's not going to overlap the river or the wall at all. Yeah, that fits like a glove. Boom, well, we're going to pull the trigger on this. And what I can do is add some stairs down from this retaining wall so we have easy access to the fisherman's hut. So the materials required to make this bad boy, let's take a look. Oh man, yeah, more of the same. Spruce and oak, a little bit of dirt and a little bit of cobblestone. No sweat whatsoever. Man, these level one buildings, so easy. Well, let's get Jay on the case. I'm gonna go and grab the oak and the spruce, grab some cobble and dirt, and catch you later for the build. The Fisherman's Hut is a great choice for early food generation on your colony, especially if you have a nearby source of water. But don't be worried if you don't, because you can easily set your builder to dredge out an area and create a very small pond, which is all a fisherman needs to get the fish. Unfortunately though, we're not building ancient Tokyo. These guys do not really enjoy eating sushi, so we're gonna have to find a way to cook the fish we get. So there's no way I'm stopping this episode without us building a restaurant. And also this is a level two colony now, so we're gonna be getting these buildings up to level two from the get-go. Another great thing about the fisherman's hut is because we have aquaculture in the mod pack, the fisherman will also catch fish from that. And there's all kinds of exotic fish you can find. Also, there's a chance that they'll fish up a treasure chest. And those can have some really spicy rewards. And there we go, the build is complete. Let's hire ourselves a fisherman. Okay, like a Kinder Egg surprise, let's crack open this fishery and see what's inside and hopefully not choke on the pieces. So, we're gonna dig up this grass so we can get easy access to the fisherman's hut. Oh, but it looks like the steps go down a bit low, so we'll have to fix that, but looking pretty cool. Yeah, there's the brown bricks in action, just terracotta and bricks. Not too tricky. Oh, it does look a bit bare inside though. This thing needs some furniture. Maybe it gets that at like level five. Good job, Jay. So here we go. We've only got two spare colonists at the moment. It's Selda Sake and Tuppy Hoobies, the first two children of our colony and potentially the only two for now. Now stats wise, I reckon Tuppy is the one. Hope you don't mind being a fisher, my friend. And let's suck him on over here. There we go. Oh man, looking great, Tuppy. Got like bait along your waist. Very good, but no fisherman's rod. Well, that's why we made another one. So here we go. You got the tools you need now. Now let's hang around a bit. Make sure she does actually get to fishing. Yeah, oh man, but Tuppy, you got this amazing pier right here. Why don't you cast your line out this way? Nope, just over here along the granite, that's fine. Sure, that works too. Anyway, we'll leave her to fish and come back later to see what she's caught. Are you okay, are you having an attack? Can I get you anything? Call an ambulance? No, she seems okay. Oh, hey, yeah, now, so check this out. We ended the avenue with this end piece. And what the end piece does is add this stairway section Oh yeah, with some trap doors. And if you take a look down here, oh yeah, look at this. So now we have access to the sewers that run underneath these roads. And if you didn't know these exist, they're pretty cool. And we can go all the way along here, although we are trapped. There's no way to get out apart from at the other end. So, oh, and it looks like building the guard tower has kind of like um, squashed the space down here, but that's fine. That's fine. Nobody's really hanging out in the sewers anyway, are they? So we'll close that up because that's a bit of a health and safety hazard falling down into the sewers. So we've got the fisherman's hut. 
Now we need to do something with the fish, and that means it's time to build a restaurant. And here we go, apples in the middle, wood along the edge, and then on top, the build tool. Boom, restaurant. Now I'm pretty excited to see what kind of restaurant options we have, but I'm also a bit nervous. We got lucky with the fisherman's hut. It's quite a small building. How big is the restaurant gonna be? Well, there's only one option for restaurant. It goes all the way up to level five, and it looks pretty cool. This is level one, two, three, four, and five. Nice. Well, let's see if we can find a place to squeeze this. I'm kind of thinking somewhere near to the fisherman's hut might be cool, but the problem is, right, even though the fisherman grabs fish, anything that goes to the restaurant has to go via the warehouse first. So where we put the restaurant isn't exactly essential. However, we do have this terrace section over here that has some really cool views. So maybe that's an idea. Yeah, do you know what? I'm thinking this terrace is actually the perfect size. It cuts into the mountain ever so slightly, but not enough for that to be a real concern. Oh uh, yeah, pretty nice. And doesn't look like there's anything super taxing as far as materials go in here. Okay, well let's get this one built as well. So there's gonna be a little bit of digging required for this build. Also, Nikki is gonna have to use her pickaxe to smash down that wall. But other than that, pretty simple. Now we've got these purple, I think they're jacarinda, jacarinda trees around the restaurant. And we do have to start thinking about what kind of trees we're gonna speckle around the colony. And it's a tricky choice. Now, for the memes, I feel like mahogany has gotta be the one. I took a look at those trees, and while they're usually found in like rainforest and jungle, they do still look pretty cool in our conventionally plain style of colony over here. So I'm gonna have to go and grab some mahogany saplings at some point. It might be worth putting them in the hopper pot because we're gonna want loads of these trees around. So we're gonna need loads of saplings. But the restaurant is a great place. Basically colonists come here, collect food, hang around and eat it, and then go back about their business. It's essential for any big colony to have really high quality food available at all times to keep the happiness levels high. With a restaurant, you hire a cook. At level three, you can hire a secondary cook, I guess like a sous chef. But just a level two restaurant for now should be great for us. Now, as I said, with the fisherman's build, we can't get fish from the fisher's hut to the restaurant without a courier and a warehouse set up. So the things we need to build are really stacking up now. We need a warehouse. We're also gonna need a hospital because our guys have started to get sick and that's always a scary time. However, until we have the hospital, we can just put carrots and potatoes into the warehouse and our dudes will still just come grab those and heal themselves. And also, I've been looking into it. Basically, you guys have been just a Wikipedia of knowledge about the Byzantine Empire. And where possible, I wanna be loyal to the original Byzantine style of doing things, to the crops they grew, and the things they traded in. Oh, the rain, terrible. But luckily enough, our builders don't seem to mind building in it, thank God. So let's take a look at this restaurant. Oh, it looks pretty cool. Lots and lots of tables. Man, we're gonna fill up this place easily once we get loads and loads of dudes in our colony. You okay? Oh, got the hiccups there, Nikki. So what we're gonna do now is hire a cook. Got one more colonist, the last child. So it's gotta be Selda Sake. And crazily enough, look at this. She somehow got 17 adaptability. I don't know why that stat is so high because she was a child of our colonists, right? Still, she's perfect for this job. So let's get her on over here and see what a medieval cook looks like. Oh my God, whoa, oh, I love the red hair. Look at that bun, amazing. So we've got the restaurant and we've got the fishery. Now she's gonna need some fuel, which we're gonna set to just planks because we've got loads and loads of wooden planks. So maybe if we just get this as jungle plank, boom. And we'll hook you up with, whoa, plenty of this. But also she's gonna need a food to cook. So it's pretty lucky that we've had our fisher going in the background. Now it looks like she's got a red cog wheel, probably broke her fishing rod. But this will be a good test. So how much fish can a fisherman catch if a fisherman, oh look, there's a fish on your belt. Very cool. Can a fisherman catch if a fisherman breaks their rod? So one rod will get us. Okay, so we've got 17 raw salmon in here and 31 raw cod, a couple of puffer fish that we're gonna leave. 
and some tropical. She's also caught a bowl and some water bottles. I mean, you can throw those back, Tuppy. You don't have to pocket everything you catch. I mean, what's she gonna get next, an old boot? Mind you, you can make soup from boots uh, <laughs> because they're made from leather. Kind of, not very nutritious though. Oh my God, and she's got the flu. She's been here for like two minutes and she's got the flu. Ugh, well, we're gonna have to find some potatoes and carrots, but we can go over here to the rack and put in those fish. And now let's go and see if we can track down some carrots and potatoes. There we go, a stack of carrots and a stack of potatoes. And while we're here, I'm really worried about our colonists getting super sick. I was thinking about putting carrots and potatoes in botany hopper pods, but a stack of each should be enough until we can get a farm. So I won't do that just yet. They only need one of each to cure the flu. Also getting from the ship to the actual colony is a bit of a pain. We have to run through this tunnel under the bridge, go up by the fisherman's hut, it's not ideal. Oh, we've got big jump height though, so we can kind of abuse that. But yeah, the colony needs more stairs and access points because also when our builder went to build the fishery, he ran all the way around the guard tower. That's crazy. So here we go, Selda Sake. Man, it's actually quite a cool name for like a, uh, a chef, Selda Sake. So if you wanna come over here and eat some food, maybe you can enjoy a nice sake with it. Oh my God, Nikki picked up the potato. <laughs> uh, all right, well, we're gonna go into a backpack and do this manually. Here we go. Carrots and potatoes. You know the song. Play the song. There we go. Oh man, now this is my jam. So while she's curing herself, let's take a look. Raw salmon, raw cod, and tropical fish. There must be a recipe in here that uses cod. Atlantic cod, this food is not nourishing enough. Cod and chips, we'd need some chips. Cooked stuff cod, I don't know what's in that, but cooked cod can definitely do. Now all of the recipes are on by default, so she should be making cooked salmon and cooked cod. What about the tropical fish, do they? No, so the tropical fish don't actually have a recipe or if they do, it's not called tropical. Okay, so tropical fish kind of functions like any generic fish you can use it to make. Ooh, a trophy, very cool. But also things like fish and chips, well, no, just fish and chips and sushi. Okay, are you cured? You're cured. So are you gonna cook something? Oh no, of course, you're gonna need those jungle planks. That's why we're gonna put those also in the ranks. Are they gonna start disappearing? Yeah, they're gone, amazing, so she's gonna get to it. And this means that our colonists will start to eat at the restaurant. That's amazing, so we have the fisherman's hut now and the restaurant spun up and ready to go. Now we do still have slots in the colony, so it's time to go over to the tavern now, see if we've got any new dudes appearing in the colony. Nobody downstairs, bit of a ghost town down here, and upstairs also pretty empty. Where is everybody? Now is this a colonist named Neon Cuckoo Bee, or is it a bee? It sounds like it's probably a bee, but I can't remember if one of you guys had a custom name that had bee in it. And if you guys did submit a name that has bee in it, that would be a bit of a jerk move, because I'd be forever looking around for these guys and thinking they were bees, so I'm gonna go over and check. Well, would you look at that? That's actually amazing, it's a bee. I'm not quite sure what a neon cuckoo bee makes with its honey, but it's exciting though. Well, okay, yeah, where are these colonists? Why are we not getting any new dudes? This is bizarre. Oh my God, Nikki is sick again. This time though, it's not the flu, it's measles. She is absolutely ridden with disease. Dandelions, kelp and poppies Oh my god, the colonists getting sick is becoming a real, real problem. There we go, rise and shine. Now she doesn't need these items to build the restaurant, so we can get that out of here. The restaurant's always going to want more fuel, and it's always going to want more food, so these will probably stick around. And of course the fisher wants a fishing rod. But there's one thing we can do, and that is get swords for our guards. It's kind of bad that we haven't done this already. Now they're only level two guard towers, which I believe means stone swords. Level one is wood, level two stone, three iron, four diamond, and five enchanted, I think? I think that's how it goes. 
And time to make a sword. There we go. And we'll make a couple of these because we need two. So, guard number one, it's John Cletus. Hey, got you a sword, bro. I'll take care of it. Gonna hook you up. He's got a quest for zombies. But forgetting that, yeah, let's get him the sword. Oh my god, he's sick as well. Ugh. Now, getting colonists cured of their diseases is no easy feat. Getting a hospital is locked behind some university research. And we haven't even built that yet. So there is tons and tons and tons to do. But I feel like this episode we've made a little headway. Both the Fisherman's Hut now and the restaurant are level 2. That's pretty cool. So a massive thank you for watching this episode of Mine Colony's Byzantine. A bit more of a chill one. We got the food situation on the colony sorted out. I think next episode, I might be building a warehouse, but I'm also keen to go another level higher with the Builder's Hut. And I'm thinking I might not even stop at level 3. I might see if I have what it takes to get to level 4. Don't forget to hit... Just kidding. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.